89 part 1 if you want good of society then ghantas and santas should be put in gangs start worshipping every human being who has god in him millions of rupees have been wasted in kashi and varanasi so just to let people know i think you all know kashi and varanasi they are two cities uh, very considered very holy cities in india ghanta and santa when we say he is talking about uh, uh, what do you call monks uh, like the beggars and the monks who go into temples they they use ghanta so millions of rupees have been wasted in kashi and vrindavan for thakurji's house now when he is saying thakurji i think there is a god and uh, to god we call thakurji uh, in uh, temples in india sometimes thakurji doors are open and sometimes closed sometimes thakurji changes clothes and sometimes take bath sometimes he takes food sometimes thakurji is involved in shraddh and having delicious food on the other hand people in extreme poverty are hungry and die so this is seems to be real vivekananda who is coming out as i said in the beginning i found my guru or my teacher propagating some thoughts which people wanted to hear on the other side when you ask him he is totally opposite of what he has told so 30 years i was confused if you ask me very frankly i always people used to ask me like who is your role model i used to say vivekananda one day one person asked me what he taught what about god i couldn't answer because i was confused like when you read Swami Vivekanand, suddenly it fires you up. Your blood starts boiling, you feel like you should invade some country or do something. But on the other side, when you analytically look into the teachings, you cannot reply. And you cannot reply to anyone because you love him. Right? When you respect a person, when you like a person, when you admire a person, you don't want to go against that particular personality, even if he has some wrong in him. Right? That's what I was doing. But soon when I came in, contact with Rishi Dayanand, light of truth. Uh, I took a decision that man, you need to bring all this up front. Worship only one true God who can be realized and break all idols which never take birth or have nor have previous birth. They do not die. Let's break them and live together with one God. What else one can say? Letter part 2, page 200. So Swami Vivekananda and I will urge all my countrymen all the people of different religion, Hindu religion and other religions, listen to me very carefully. What I am presenting, there is a big strategy to suppress the thought of proper Hinduism in the society by bringing wrong teachings in front of people and avoiding the right teachings from the people. What he has clearly said, I don't think anyone can say such a statement. Worship only one true God who can be realized. Break all idols. Such a strong statement he has made. But if you go and talk to people, they will never agree with this. It's against the, the common thinking of the people. Reduce the expense on puja to one or two rupees. One or two rupees, very small amount. Son and daughter of God are dying of hunger. Just worship by using water and tulsi. Letter, part 1, page 239. Swami Vivekananda himself is saying that this worshipping an idol is a waste. It's a, it is done by underdeveloped mind or people who cannot even think properly. So they worship these idols. God is one. God is everywhere. Now let's, so, so far what we have seen, Swami Vivekananda from idol worship point of view, slide his thinking. Now let's see whether he was a social reformer or not. Again, everything from his book, his work, what he has written. He criticizes that our reformers don't want to find where the star is, but they want widows to get remarried to protect nation. Letter, part 2, page 12. So, so Swami Vivekananda was not against child marriage. In other way, he was trying to support child marriage. I do not bother about child marriage. He simply himself he said, I do not bother about child marriage, widow remarriage, etc. I admit that child marriage makes the nation physically as well as morally strong. So we all should have got married at the age of two years. Otherwise we cannot be morally strong. So I don't know, my mother is sitting here, she will agree with that, she should have got me married at the age of two years. So I don't know who the lucky girl will be. Okay, Indian woman, page 34, 53. He says, we should not think and discuss a lot about child marriage and widow marriage. Bharti Nari, page 34. So he doesn't he want to discuss even about the child marriage. 
So one of the social evil, he doesn't want to discuss about them. He even supports child marriage in Bharatiya Nari, page 53, he says that by child marriage, Jati becomes more biased in well culture or will have good sons now. So it looks like we are not well cultured also. According to his views, we don't have good sanskar because my mother didn't marry me at the age of two years. Bharatiya Nari on page 52, he says, marriage makes us weak and our education teaches us that marriage is for me. The Hindus can really promote their culture by grasping the basic ideal which developed the institution of child marriage. Vivekananda in India, page 430, clearly he say that Hindus, basically it's an institution which made us strong, so we should start following this child marriage practice. I also believe the child marriage has helped the Hindus in maintaining the chastity of their women folk. Wow. So the chastity of women folk is because of child marriage. Gyan Yog, page 30. I think self-explanatory statements, I don't have to explain these. Now coming to views, more views on social evil by <coughs> Swami Vivekananda. Letters or Patravali, part 1, page 108. Do not say anything related to caste system and do not say anything related to any social evil prevalent in society. Now we all have learned, actually Hinduism doesn't have any caste system. Do we all know that? That there is no caste system? Though, so, so important point here is, which I want to make. If we say that Islam, all terrorists are Islamic, it doesn't make Quran as a book of terrorism, right? If someone or some society is following the wrong teaching, you can never blame the source for that. Because source was written at a particular point of time, under a particular condition, and people were following it at that point of time, right? So in India, if you go and there is a child marriage, you cannot say it is Hinduism. In India, if you go and there is a caste system, you cannot say that is Hinduism, right? In India, if the son is beating the parent, you cannot say it is Hinduism. Because religion comes out of a set of rules, right? And you cannot say those rules are bad without understanding them. So it is important that we all understand that before we criticize any other religion, based on what we see in the society, we must first refer to that religious source. Do not say anything good or bad against ills in society or wrong social custom. Letter part 2, page 206. So he was not interested telling people directly that this is wrong, don't do this practice. On the other side, you might have seen Rishi Dayanand or the R.S. Samaj. Though they, have, they are very less nowadays, but till the last person of R.S. Samaj is standing, he will keep on fighting. That is called the true bravery that you fight when you are alone also. But he was not ready to go among the people or into the public and criticize the particular practice because he was more worried about his own image, Ramakrishna mission. Bharat Me Vivekanand, page 131, do not say anything wrong against the wrongs and evil prevalent in society. As in past they must have done some good to society. Now can anyone even think that caste system has done good to Indian society? Can anyone even think child marriage has done good to Indian society? I don't know how this statement even was made by such a brilliant guy. Vivekananda in India, page 125 says that in last 100 years, whatever social reforms have taken place in India by reformers, they have failed and no good is done. Which means the point at which he is saying this thing, according to him, Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati or all the social reformers before him, they are failure. They are not able to do anything. So it looks like, if you see till this slide, there is a complete methodology or there is a complete strategy which is being implemented that from this point of time, everything will be new. Before this, oh, it's a complete failure. Now, let's start very, a uh, uh, couple of uh, good slides, you might laugh also. Quest to find God. Devendra Nath Tagore was a leader of Brahmo Samaj. Young Narendra, with his question in his mind, went to meet Tagore. There he asked him, without much ado, Sir, have you seen God? This is the first time he asked, have you seen God? Tagore replied, partially ignored this question and told, My boy, you have eyes of a yogi. You should practice meditation. Narendra was disappointed. He did not go there. 
and to get praise for his eyes. Now, think from an analytical point. There is a, I go to a person, suppose I come to you and I say, where is God? And you are a yogi or you are a great scholar. You suddenly see, oh, this guy has a potential of a yogi. Go and meditate, right? That is the, that's the right guidance. So he felt, oh, no, I don't need a praise. He, this guy couldn't answer my question. Who, who was able to answer his question? Let's see that. In early 1882, Narendra Nath. So, who is Narendra Nath? Swami Yes. So, sorry. Uh, Narendra Nath is basically Swami Vivekananda. In early 1882, Narendra Nath went to meet Ram Krishna at Dakshineshwar. There too, without much ado, he directly asked Ram Krishna Paramahans, Sir, have you seen God? Ram Krishna smiled calmly and then promptly replied without any hesitation. So now see the difference. Yes, I have seen God. I see him as I see you here, only more clearly. God can be seen, one can talk to him. But who cares for God? People shed torrents of tears for their wives, children, wealth and property, but who weeps for the vision of God? If one cries sincerely for God, one can surely see him. And suddenly he gets, oh, this is the answer which I want, this guy knows God. So what I am saying by these two presentations or two slides, a guy replied in a yogic way that you have a vision of a yogi, you should meditate. He says this is crap. But the person who replied in this way, where it doesn't make sense, he said it's a God. Swami Nikolananda wrote in his book, now there is another uh, Swami Nikolananda, he has done a lot of studies of uh, Swami Vivekananda and he has written in book. Narendra was astounded for the first time he was face to face with a man who asserted that he had seen God. For the first time in fact, he was hearing that God could be seen. Uh, I don't know, like uh, any one of you feel like uh, you will get motiv motivated by the answer of Ram Krishna? That you will believe that he is? Uh, I'll be motivated. That's good. At least one person. He could feel that Ram Krishna's words were uttered from the depth of an inner experience. They could not be doubted. This was the first time Narendra Nath met someone who could declare so easily that he had seen God. It was a new experience for Narendra Nath. So, there are people who, will, who might get motivated. There might be people who will feel that no, there is a great sage. He has said that you have, a, you have something yogic in you. Go and do meditation and realize it yourself. So, just to give you an idea. What Tagore said is said by all the great teachers before him. <laughs> Buddha, if you go and meet Buddha, and if Buddha finds you that you have some potential, he will say go and meditate. All the teachings of Buddha is like that. Osho, all his teachings are based on that one sentence. You go and meditate. Even whole yogic philosophy of India is based on meditation. And I think we all practice during different times meditation, whichever Acharya come here. They, simply, they don't give this kind of answer. They simply ask you that you have the potential, start meditating. And then they take you to that path. Gautam Sen wrote, the mind of Swami Vivekananda, Ram Krishna sensed in Narendra the relentless stirring of an earnest soul and decided to open the doors of his spirituality to the noble youngster. This was the beginning of relationship between Ram Krishna and Swami Vivekananda. So let's start the relationship between Ram Krishna, Swami Ram Krishna Paramahans and Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda said that God is omnipresent. We can know him in human form only. Sri Ram Krishna was complete in itself. Never has such a great personality born on this planet. Letter part one, page 100. So why I have put these sentences? So that later on we can compare what Rishi Dayananda also said. My objective is not to criticize, it is just what these two people have said. You all know Rishi Dayanand had number of teachers in life, yogic teachers. There were two yogic gurus, then Vijayananji was there. And he also used to consider them like a god, but he never worshipped them like a god. Again in Bhakti Yoga, page 42, he says that we cannot see god without guru. Only guru can enlighten us. Some gurus are best out of gurus as they can enlighten you just by touch. We cannot live without worshipping such gurus. So for Swami Vivekananda, Paramans was basically a god. And there is nothing wrong. 
Yeah. He used to consider him God. For him, Krishna or any other uh, person who took birth on this planet was nothing in front of uh, Ram Krishna Paramahansa. Perfectly fine. He further says that without Sri Ram Krishna, life is study. Ved and Vedanta cannot be understood. So it looks like if we have to understand Vedas and Vedanta, we cannot understand any of the Hindu books without reading Ram Krishna Paramahansa. Which means if I have spent eight years in understanding Vedas or Vedic book, I cannot because I have not read about Ram Krishna Paramahansa. Do, do you think? Is it true? Like if we have not studied Ram Krishna Paramahansa, we are not even authorized or we cannot even understand the Vedas. He further says that without Sri Ram Krishna life study, Ved Vedanta cannot be understood. We cannot say if Lord Krishna took birth with surety. Important point. Now Lord Krishna, I consider him as the yogi, the greatest yogi ever born on this earth. You might have studied about him, you might have read about him. And he is saying, we cannot say that Lord Krishna took birth with surety or Buddha and Chaitanya are of reincarnation. But Sri Ram Krishna is recent and most advanced and complete in himself. Letter part 2 page 54. Views on Guru. Further he says, if I had written about Ram Krishna, I would have proved quoting from scriptures and even the holy books of Christianity that Ram Krishna was the greatest of all the prophets of the world. Swami Nikolanan Jeevan Charit, page 269. So he is saying that he will give a reference of Bible Christianity to prove that Ram Krishna is the biggest prophet. Through thousands of years, the life of great prophets of yore came down to us and yet none stands so high in brilliance as the life of Ram Krishna teaching of Swami Vivekananda, page 312. No, no need to discuss religion with anyone. Letter part 1, page 218. So, if to be a social reformer, how can you be a social reformer if you don't discuss and teach people, right? Here he is saying, no need to discuss religion with anyone. Letters part 1, page 20. I hate debate and discussion on religious letter, page 2, 222. He says that when Ram Krishna came on this earth, Satyug started. Patravali, part 2, page 109. So this is very strange, like Satyug has started recently. So I don't know, I, I cannot comment on this. He further says that Ved or Vedant and whatever all incarnations have done in past, Sri Ram Krishna perfected all that in his one life. Letters part 2, page 116. So it looks like uh, Ram Krishna Paraman was a, he was a God born. He further claimed that no one can understand Ved and Vedanta until one understands life of Ram Krishna, letter part 2, page 120. Through thousands of years, the life of the great prophet of Yor came down to us. And yet none stands so high in brilliance as the life of Ram Krishna, page 312. The teachings of Swami Vivekananda. Now those who are the followers of Swami Vivekananda, and I am one of them, 